All right, example 1.1, we have 3 and 7 ninths minus 2 and 1 ninth. We're doing mixed number subtraction. And for me personally, I like mixed numbers to be written vertically instead of horizontally. So if I was doing this problem out of my homework, what would go on my paper would look like that. And the requirement of subtraction of fractions or addition of fractions is a common denominator, which you can see these have a common denominator already of 9. So we are going to subtract the fraction part, 7 ninths minus 1 ninth, which is big enough to subtract. That's the other thing you have to worry about with subtraction. Is this number big enough to subtract that number? If it is, you're ready to go. If not, you're going to have to do some borrowing, which we're going to see in another example in a moment. 7 minus 1 is 6, and we put that over 9. And then 3 minus 2, the whole number subtraction just gets you a 1. And the last step of fractions is reduction of fractions. I expect all fractions to be reduced to lowest terms always. The easiest way to do this, and obviously 6 ninths is 2 thirds, but let's say we get bigger numbers, because okay, we're going to get bigger numbers. And we want to see, does this reduce? Um, what I do is I take the number that has the sm either the smallest number or one that has an easy factorization. Look at 6, which is 2 times 3. I simply have to ask myself, do either of those numbers go into 9? And 3 does, right? So you do that, and 6 divided by 3 is 2, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then, of course, 2 doesn't go into 3, so it can't reduce anymore, so that would be the best answer. All right, a couple things to consider on this problem, though, is that in order to add or subtract fractions, we have to have a common denominator, same number on the bottom of both fractions. And again, with subtraction of fractions, the top fraction has to be bigger than the bottom fraction to be able to subtract. If it isn't, borrowing is necessary, which we will again discuss in a moment.